Now we are going to talk about jointly distributed random variables. See there may be events which uh, need to be described by more than one random variable. So, there may be you know the uh, phenomena the random phenomena concerned with the event are more than one dimension and therefore, uh, we need to uh, be able to uh, to of course, then we from two dimensions we go to multi dimensions also, but uh, right now to keep it simple we will first talk about uh, uh, two dimensional random variables and then maybe extend the notion to uh, more than two. So, uh, if x and y are two random variables, we define their joint uh, joint cumulative distribution function as follows. So, probability uh, so f of x less than or equal to a comma y less than or equal to b is uh, actually uh, the probability that x is less than or equal to a and y less than or equal to b um, a and b uh, two real numbers between minus infinity and infinity. Right. Okay, so, essentially in this diagram, your uh, uh, if this is b, then uh, you are asking for y uh, less than or equal to b and then x less than or. So, it will be this whole region, right. If you can see this line and this line. So, whole of r 2 uh, uh, extending from here to this end, right. That will be your, uh, so uh, the, the you are talking of the probability uh, over this region. Okay. Then, uh, the moment you define the joint uh, C D F, the cumulative distribution function, then you can talk of the marginal C D F. Uh, of, uh, so, for example, of marginal C D F of x can be obtained from uh, F A B as follows. Oh, sorry, this should be uh, A B the probability part comes here x less than or equal to a y less than or equal to b. So, um, therefore, uh, from f a b we can uh, obtain the marginal c d f of x as follows. So, this is f x a which is probability x less than or equal to a. So, this will be actually therefore, that means this means that y is allowed to take uh, any possible value. So, therefore, uh, y probability x less than or equal to a and y less than infinity. So, now let me just uh, define it in a proper way in the sense that uh, this is also the same as um, b going to infinity. So, limit that means, if I take the uh, event x less than or equal to a y less than or equal to b and, and then I take the limit. So, you see what will happen as b goes to infinity. So, um, uh, x less than or equal to a y less than or equal to b you are talking of this then when uh, say say b 1 then you talk of this y less than or equal to b 2, where uh, b 2 is greater than b 1. Then this is a bigger event, right? this event is contained. So, therefore, now you have a sequence of these events, which are increasing. So, increasing sequence of events as b goes to infinity. And if you remember my definition of uh, probability as a, a continuous function, continuous set function. So, then in that case I told you that we can in that case extend, I mean when you have an increasing sequence of uh, sets, then and you are computing the probability, uh, you want to take the limit, then the probability of the limit is the limit of the probability. So, therefore, I can take limit outside and this will be limit as b goes to infinity of the uh, uh, this uh, event x less than or equal to a, y less than or equal to b. So, you take the probability here and therefore, this will be limit uh, and this is now your f a b by definition. So, this limit b going to infinity of f a comma b and this will be then f a comma infinity. So, f a and f a comma infinity are the same. Similarly, uh, uh, if you want to compute the marginal of y, then we will take the limit f a comma b a, a go to infinity, a go to infinity, which will be f infinity comma b. So, exactly in the same way, we will argue out that uh, the b remains the same and then a keeps increasing. So, you again you have increasing uh, sequence of sets and so, when you take the probability, I can uh, uh, com, uh, you know I can exchange the limit and the probability and get the answer. Okay. So, now similarly you want to compute 
uh, and then of course, you see the uh, properties that we had defined for uh, uh, that the accumulative uh, distribution function uh, uh, must have for a single variable. So, the same will apply and you can apply them to f x and f y. So, through those you can get the property for the joint. Right, because the property that uh, x f x and f y possess, combine them and you can uh, you know then put uh, together the properties that your joint uh, cumulative distribution function must have. Okay. Now, suppose you want to compute the probability of x greater than a and y greater than b. So, this we can write as 1 minus probability of the complement of this event, which is x greater than a y greater than b a complement. And then, since x and y are independent, in the sense that you know, uh, I can write this as. Uh, uh, now, this can be written as x less than or equal to a union y less than or equal to b, right? From if you recall your De Morgan's laws and so on. So then, this will be one minus probability x less than or equal to a minus probability y less than or equal to b, and then. Uh, you add probability x less than or equal to a comma y less than or equal to b. And this uh, diagrammatically also you can immediately see that this is how uh, from here we have to get here, because um, you are computing the probability x less than or equal to a and y less than or equal to b. <coughs> so, this will be you see x less than or equal to a would give you this region right? and y less than or equal to b will give you this region. right? So, uh, you see the region extending from here x less than a y less than b is this region, which you are have uh, subtracted twice. Because once when you do it for x less than a, the probability x less than or equal to a. So, it is this. So, then this region is coming into it. Then when you uh, subtract probability y less than or equal to b, then again this whole region is coming. Right. And therefore, uh, you add this again. So, in, in words of your, I should have written this, uh, uh, that means your, uh, yeah. So, therefore, I will simply write this probability in terms of 1 minus f x a minus f y b. So, this will be equal to 1 minus f x a minus f y b plus f uh, plus f a b. So, therefore, to um, uh, make the equation correct, I uh, add this once and then, uh, because I need to subtract only see I need this region. So, the valid region that I require is this and therefore, from 1 I subtract this whole and so, this got subtracted twice, therefore, I add it once to make it proper. Okay. So, this will be your, uh, uh, that means now uh, one can compute whatever probabilities you want uh, related to these two random variables, it can be done once we have made this definition. Now, in general, um, in general, if um, x is lying in the interval a 1 comma a 2 and y in the interval b 1 comma b 2, then um, this can be written as f a 2 comma b 2 plus f a 1 comma b 1 minus f a 1 comma b 2 minus f a 2 comma b 1. So, here again we will just simply uh, diagrammatically look at the uh, uh, equality that we have here. So, um, x is varying between a 1 and a 2 and y is varying between b 1 and b 2. Then f a 2 b 2 is this whole area. right? In fact, if you are if, if it is not uh, if it is only non negative variable, then it is this region. So, just assume for uh, for argument's sake that this is uh, both the variables are non negative, but otherwise it will extend to infinity and this will extend to infinity. So, anyway, because this is f a 2 b 2 is probability x less than a 2 and y less than b 2. So, um, in the case of non negative variables, this is the total region, then f a 1 comma b 1 is this region let me uh, this here, then f a 1 comma b 2, a 1 comma b 2 is this whole thing and f a 2 comma b 1 is this region here. So, you see that here you are uh, subtracting this region twice and in this a 2 plus b a 2 comma b 2 you are adding it and then you are adding this. So, that gets cancelled out and this region also gets cancelled out. So, from the whole of f a 2 comma b 2 you are finally, left with this particular region. This is the idea I am I am equating the uh, the probability with the uh, with the area. 
in a sense, right? And that's how I'm trying to explain. Okay, so if you keep this picture in mind, then you can always uh, uh, make the right computation. Now, in case x and y are discrete random variables, the joint mass function can be written easily, because here you are um, simply wanting to compute these probabilities. Probability x equal to a, y equal to b uh, is p a comma b. This is how we will define. So, if we can compute this probability, then that is the probability a comma b, and this for all possible values. Uh, the pairs uh, a comma b uh, taken by x comma y okay and then we can also compute the marginal uh, probability mass function of x which will be simply probability x equal to a and this will be your summing these probabilities over um, so fix the um, x at a and then you uh, summing it over all possible values of y so you are summing up p a comma y for all possible values of y that will give you the probability that x attains the value a because here the value of y is in uh, is not uh, is immaterial so therefore you sum it up over all possible values that y will take similarly p y b will be summing up these probabilities x comma b when um, p x b is positive so, in this case uh, you, you want to sum up over all po possible values of x to get the probability that y will take the value b right and we'll um, go through an example here so let us consider this three balls are randomly selected from an urn containing two red three white and four blue balls so the total number of balls uh, is 9 and now you want to find the joint distribution function of x and y uh, when uh, when okay x and y when uh, where three balls are chosen from the urn and x represents number number of red balls and y number of okay so i pick up three balls from the urn then i note the number of uh, uh, red balls present in those three balls and the number of white balls so now we want to write down the uh, joint uh, mass function or distribution function for um, x and y so let us now continue with the example uh, with the which the, the urn contains two red balls three white and four blue total number of balls is 9. So, you want to compute the cumulative mass function for the uh, variables uh, x comma y, where um, x is the number of uh, uh, red balls and y is the number of white, white balls, when you uh, pick up 3 balls from the urn. Right. So, let us, I will just compute a few and then you can uh, try to uh, complete the table. I think maybe I have uh, completed it already. So, uh, when you want to compute the probability of 0, 0, that means x is equal to 0 and y is 0. So, which is no red ball and no white ball. So, that means all the 3 balls that you pick up from the urn must be blue. So, the probability of all 3 balls being blue is 4 c 3 and the total number of ways in which you can pick up 3 balls from uh, 9 balls is 9 choose 3 and so this number comes out to be 1 upon 21 which is here right then um, i should have computed p01 uh, and i think i have written it here as uh, uh, so it's this this number is actually okay so it's got mixed up okay this is 1 by 7 so that's okay probability 1 by 0 is 1 by 7 so if you want to compute have i done it somewhere here uh, no. So, therefore, let us just quickly compute this number p 0 1. So, 0 1 is a probability no red ball and 1 uh, white ball. Okay. So, this will be no red ball that means 1 white, white ball and 2 blue balls, uh, balls. So, blue is 4 c 2 and 1 white out of 3. So, this is 3 choose 1 divided by 9 choose 3. Right. So, let us quickly compute this. This should be 6, 3 and then from here you will get a 6 and this will be 9 into 8 into 7. Okay. So, uh, 6 3s are 18 and this will be. So, twice 
twice 4, then 2 and 3. So, this is 3 by 14. So, 3 by 14 is this. Uh, okay. So, 3 by 14 is this number, right. And this way I have made some computations. So, 0, 2 you have to compute and so on. So, I have shown you some computations here p 1 2, then um, uh, p 1 0, p 1 1 we have computed and so you go on. So, now the whole idea is that once you have completed this, then as I was saying that if you want the marginal um, distribution for um, uh, x, then uh, so for example, if you are looking for the probability, yeah let me just uh, take it off from here. So, uh, if you add up the numbers here, this is what probability x equal to 0, then you are giving values to 0, 1, 2 and 3. right? So, in other words, you are adding up probability, um, let me write it as 0, 0 plus probability 0, 1 plus probability 0, 2 plus probability 0, 3. So, there can be 3 uh, white balls, because total number of white balls is 3. So, all this will give you the probability that x is equal to 0, right. Because when you pick up the 3 balls, if it does not contain um, any red balls, then those 3 balls will either contain uh, no uh, white ball, 1 white ball, 2 white balls or 3 white balls. So, this all these probabilities add up to the probability x equal to 0. And so, this will be right. Similarly, when you add up the second row, that will give you probability x equal to 1. Sec third row will give you probability x equal to 2 and this will be probability x equal to 3. But since, uh, this is all 0, because there are no, uh, uh, the number of red balls is only 2. So, you cannot have uh, number of red balls in the sample that you pick up as equal to 3. right? So, therefore, uh, this is all zeros. Similarly, here uh, you cannot have uh, uh, the um, combination 3 comma 3, because you are picking up only 3 balls and uh, similarly 3 comma 2, 3 comma 1 is also not possible. From here 2 comma 2 and 2 comma 3 is also not possible. So, these are the only numbers and you see this now finally, because uh, this is probability x equal to 0, probability x equal to 1, probability x equal to 2, which are all the possible values that x can take in your uh, uh, sample of 3 balls. Right, because there are only uh, at most two uh, white balls that can appear in a sample. So, this must add up to 1. And similarly, when you add up, uh, see when I add up these probabilities, this will give me the probability that the y is equal to 0. That means, there is no white ball in the sample. When you add up these numbers, this will give you the probability that y is equal to 1. Right, And similarly, this. So, all these 4 when you add up, that should also add up to 1 and that will give you a good check. So, again that means, when we are defining um, the marginal uh, PDFs and so on, then we must continue to check the validity. right? And so, make sure that uh, your calculations are okay, because otherwise you will know that you have made a mistake somewhere. So, you can go back and check. So, all these numbers, so th the numbers here will give you the marginal uh, distribution of y, here the numbers will be marginal distribution of x and so on. Okay. So, um, uh, this uh, is uh, how you write down the joint uh, probability distribution of two random variables. Now, take another example, so that I want to you know, make sure that you understand how the calculations are being done. Um, now, this is an example in which there is a community in which 15 percent of the families have no children, 20 percent of the families have one child, then uh, 35 percent of the families have two children and 30 percent have three children. Now, the uh, probability of um, be the, the children being a boy or a girl is same, that means it is half half. So, once you pick up a family at random, so the, uh, the uh, experiment that we are doing here is that you pick up a family from the uh, at random, that means uh, any family is equally likely, then you want to find out the number of boys and girls in that family. So, both, them, uh, both of them are random variables. That means, number of boys in the family and the number of girls in the family, the family that you have picked up at random. Okay. So, um, here again, let us see, um, I have made a few calculations. So, if you want to compute p 0 0, 
then that means uh, no children. So, of course, this is straightforward. You know that 15 percent of the families have no children. So, this is simply 0.15. So, which we write here. Then, when you want to compute p 0 1, that means no boy, just one girl. So, this is the event probability of one girl child. Now, I will write this as a conditional probability saying that probability one child into probability one girl given that there is one child in the family. right? So, that will come out to be 0 0.20 into half, because um, there is only one child in the family right? p 0 1. So, um, that means, only one uh, girl and no boy. So, this uh, the total number of children in the family is 1. So, that probability is 0.20. Then, uh, it being a girl or a boy, the probability is the same. Therefore, it will be into half. So, that is 0.10. That is the number you enter here. Then, similarly, if you want to compute p 0 2, then it will be 2 children. Um, and so, I am writing the conditional straight away. So, two children probability of that and then two girls given there are two children. So, this is 0.35 from here families having two children that is 0.35 and then two girls. So, 1 by 2 into 1 by 2. So, 1 by 4 divided by 4 and so that is 0.0875. So, 0 0.0875. Then, when you want to compute, yeah, I have done it here, it is not very really this thing, but anyway, it is coming up. Yeah, maybe I can just show the calculation in a better way. So, when you, you want to have uh, 0, 3, that means all the children are girls. So, this again will be probability 3 children, which is 0 0.30, then into 1 by 8, because all the 3 are girls. So, 1 by 2 raised to 3 and therefore, you divide by uh, this by 8. So, this is uh, 0 0.0, then 3 will be 24, then 6, then 8 7s are 56 and then 40 and 8 5s are 40. So, 0 0.3, 0 0.375, 0 0.375. So, when you add up these numbers, this will here will be the probability, uh, probability that x is 0. That means, no uh, uh, probability when you pick up a family at random from the community, it, uh, the chil there are no boys in the ch uh, family uh, in that family. So, that number will come out to be this, you can add it up. Similarly, this will give you the probability that x is equal to 1. That means, one boy in the family probability x equal to 2 and this will be probability x equal to 3. Okay, and here also you can see that this these combinations and of course, because the boys and girls are equally likely. So, the tables. So, once you have computed this part, then this is symmetric, right? because whether having a one boy and uh, two girls or, or in fact sorry, one one when you have two children. So, it is whether girl or boy is same, therefore, this will be the same. Then one two, uh, see this one we are having, uh, yeah, this is two 0, I am sorry. 0, 1 and 1, 0. So, that was the number. Then, uh, uh, this number for example, 2, 1 and 1, 2, <coughs> 1, 2. So, these two numbers. So, this is symmetric, because boys and girls are equally likely. Similarly, here whether all the three children in the family are uh, uh, boys or all the three children are girls, is the, uh, the probability must be the. Oh, so, I am sorry, this should be 0.375. Okay, so, make that correction. So, this will be 0 0.0375 and then again as we said when you add up all these probabilities, they should be add, they should add up to 1 and here also you will get the marginals. So, this will be probability y equal to 0, probability y equal to 1, probability y equal to 2 and probability y equal to 3. Okay. So, I would uh, like you to complete the tables. I have made some computations for you. This, so this is the same. Now, you have to make just these two computations and then you can complete the table. So, this is this give, should give you an idea as to how to go about computing joint uh, for when the variables are discrete, how to compute the joint distribution function for discrete random variables. So, let us continue with the joint uh, jointly distributed random variables. Suppose, x and y are continuous. So, I will now um, uh, define uh, another way, uh, another way in the sense that now I will define this through uh, your uh, joint PDF. 
And so, we are saying that if there exists a function f x comma y, real valued function, which is defined for real x and y, having the property that for every set c, a subset of R 2, that means all pairs of values, uh, the, uh, the pairs of values which are there in c, then um, x y belonging to c, that means you see the the um, convention is that the first, uh, these are pair of coordinates, then the uh, first value is for x and the second value is for y. So, then uh, probability that x y belongs to c is uh, this. So, now this is different from the way we define the cumulative uh, distribution function right in the beginning. So, of course, the two will merge to the same uh, thing. So, uh, here the integra uh, the probability should be f x y d x d y okay, for a uh, 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 continuously distributed uh, joint uh, uh, you know jointly uh, distributed continuous random variable. So, f x y is called the joint p d f of x comma y and if a and b are two subsets in r square, then um, probability that x belongs to a and y belongs to b will be integration over a with respect to uh, d x and uh, actually uh, see what you sh one should make a convention that uh, this must refer to the later one here. So, I should have said this is d y and d x, because it's just a convention. So, therefore, when you are writing the uh, limits, you know the ranges, then uh, it is nice to remember that this one refers to the second integral and this is the first. So, the order has to be maintained. So, therefore, this is a b. So, I should have written d y d x of f x comma y. So, the same thing is being on the sort of repeated and then for if your f a b as we defined earlier is now uh, you know x lying between minus infinity and a y lying between minus infinity and b. Then uh, the partial derivatives here delta square delta a delta b f a comma b will be f x y a comma v. Right? So, uh, this is the relationship between the cumulative uh, joint cumulative distribution function and joint p d f. Okay. And then of course, the uh, marginal distributions here. So, uh, this will be x belonging to a and y is from minus infinity to infinity. So, in that case you are integrating with respect to y from minus infinity to infinity and this integral when you are integrating with respect to y will be the marginal. Just as I showed you in the discrete case that uh, you add up for all the possible values of y to get the marginal. Uh, and the probability of uh, you know x for a certain value. So, same here the marginal with respect to x will be you integrate the joint p d f from minus infinity to infinity and uh, for the uh, marginal of y uh, the p d f of marginal y this would be uh, integrating uh, with respect to x from minus infinity to infinity. Okay. And of course, depending on uh, whatever the uh, region of actual definition is. Fine. Now, let us just take up this example. So, uh, uh, if you have this function defined here, uh, which is uh, defined for all values of x in from 0 to infinity and for all values of y from 0 to infinity and it is 0 otherwise. So, it is in the first quadrant that the function is defined, then uh, verify that this is joint p d f. So, therefore, the integral total integral uh, from 0 to infinity and this this should be 1. right? So, suppose I just integrate with respect to y first. So, the derivative here uh, the integral is minus e raise to minus y from 0 to infinity that gives you 1 right? because at infinity this is 0 at 0 this is 1 plus 1. So, then this is this now you differentiate integrate with respect to x. So, this is minus 3 upon 3 e raise to minus 3 x going from 0 to infinity, which is equal to 1. Right. Now, if you uh, want to compute this particular probability, then your um, limits will be. So, this time I have taken care of the order. So, this is 2 to infinity for x and for y it is from 0 to 1. And so, again the same integral, you do it with respect to y first. Right, uh, take the limits and then this is 1 minus e raise to minus 1. Then you integrate with respect to x and this will be. Um, so, the final answer will be this and so you can go on. So, this is nothing new except that uh, your dimension has increased and the same concepts are there, the same axioms will be followed and uh, so we will now um, you know continue developing this theory and then uh, talk of um, independent, independent uh, uh, random variables jointly distributed independent random variables, then we will talk of sum of random variables. So, of course, the thing is that this concept can be extended to more than two. 
and except that the writing part is a little tedious, but the same thing will follow. Okay. So, I will just revisit this, um, I had shown you this probability, uh, try to well, computing this probability, um, I had uh, drawn the diagram. So, let me just make it more clear, because I had a feeling that I did not do a very good job last time. So, let us see, uh, probability x greater than a and y greater than b. Then, if um, this is my uh, origin, this is x equal to a, this is y equal to b, then this is the uh, area that you want to compute the probability on, right. Your region x greater than a, y greater than b is this event represented by this uh, area. So, now, um, we said we will write it as x less than or equal to a. So, x less than or equal to a is this whole area, right, extending on this side, the whole area. And then, y less than or equal to b will be this area. Right. So, therefore, all this and all this gets covered and you see that this area, uh, the area that is um, uh, x less than uh, a y less than b, uh, okay, this is huh, yeah. So, um, th this portion because when you are covering x less than a, then it is all of this, y less than b, then it is all this. So, therefore, x less than a y less than b, this particular area gets covered twice. So, you add here and therefore, you get this. So, therefore, 1 minus of all this, that means, if I write uh, probability x less than or equal to a plus probability y less than or equal to b minus this, then I uh, will get the uh, region corresponding to this and therefore, uh, so 1 minus of that and that will be the uh, probability for this. So, just wanted to revisit uh, this thing and here also in the other example that we had taken uh, when uh, we were talking of a community in which there are families and there were probabilities associated with uh, uh, families having no children, one child, two children and three children. So, I thought that uh, uh, though I had asked you to compute, uh, I had computed some probabilities for you and I asked you to compute the remaining one, but I realized that probably you need a little more uh, uh, working out and the, so I thought I will uh, give you the hints here. For example, when you are computing 1 comma 1, then it is uh, the probability 2 children into the conditional probability that it is either a boy girl or girl boy. You see, um, when you are saying 1 1, so then it can be, uh, you know, the first uh, child is boy and the second is girl or the first child is girl and the second child is a boy. So, therefore, uh, this will be um, uh, 0.35 into, the, because the probability of uh, two children, families having two children is 0.35, then into actually boy girl will be 1 by 4, because each of them are equally likely, but since there are two possible cases. So, 2 into 1 by 4, therefore, this is half and so this number comes out to be 1 1, this is 0.175. Okay. Now, for uh, 1, 2, when you want 1 boy and 2 girls, then uh, the prob that means, the 3 children. So, the probability of having 3 children is 0 0.3, right. 30 percent of the families have 3 children. So, this is 0 0.3. Then, the conditional probability of having a boy and 2 girls and then uh, uh, when with 3 children, having 3 children and then 1 boy and 2 girls. So, now, uh, here again, you need to say that, see it could be the first child who is the boy, other two are girls, then it is first girl, then boy, then girl and girl, girl and boy. So, these three possibilities are also there. Therefore, it will become 3 by 8, right, because each of them is half. So, then when you have these three possible uh, cases, uh, you know, favorable for your event, then this is 3 by 8. So, 0.3 into 3 by 8, that comes out to be 0.1125. Right. And then the rest we had computed, and then these are the marginal. So that means as I told you, is probability x equal to or b equal to zero, right? And probability b equal to one, probability b equal to two, and probability b equal to three. And similarly here, this is the marginal for uh, uh, probability uh, a girl. Uh, the probability girl is zero, no girl in the family. Uh, of course, uh, so probability. Uh, no, uh, uh, there is one girl in the family, two girls and three girls. And then you see that this adds up to 1, because they are marginal PDFs or uh, probability mass functions and so. So, once you find out the joint, then you find out the marginals and then you can do all other computations uh, that are required, the expectation variance and everything. You can compute as we have 
uh, done it for you. Like even for the joint also you can do it, expectation um, x y you will do it right. And so, you will multiply the, I think I have given you the expression p x y, huh? this we debugged it out, this into uh, your the values that x and y takes. Right? is positive okay, and so on. Now, I um, will continue with some more examples of uh, uh, the continuous random variable. So, here uh, let us see, um, you take a circle of radius r and let us say it is centered at the origin. So, the equation of the circle is uh, uh, x square plus y square equal to r square. So, when you are taking the inside of the circle, then it is less than or equal to r square. So, this is the uh, circle given to you. Then uh, let us and we just uh, pick a point on inside the circle, then uh, uh, that is a random because and we are saying that all points uh, are equally likely to be picked up in the inside the circle. Then uh, x let x represent the x coordinate of the point that you have picked up, y is the capital Y represents the y coordinate. So, now both x and y are random variables and since any point in the circle is equally likely, therefore, uh, it will be a constant. The p d f of uh, x comma y, the joint p d f of x comma y will be a constant uh, inside the circle and 0 outside. And this is an example of a, a two dimensional, two variable uniform distribution, uniform distribution. Right. So, uh, this represents a uniform distribution, because any point in the region in the inside and on the circle is equally likely. right? And then, uh, now we want to find out the value of c. So, um, uh, we will have to say that uh, this must integrate to uh, 1, the whole thing. And since, <coughs> this is simply minus infinity to infinity and minus infinity to infinity d x d y, this is an element of area. Right. So, when you integrate over the whole of the circle, you will get the area of the circle okay, by everybody. So, this is uh, uh, you have already done it in your class 12 and so on. So, then uh, c into pi r square is equal to 1. Therefore, your constant is 1 upon pi r square, which is expected. Right? For in one dimension also, I told you that when you had a uniform random variable, then this was the length of the. So, if this was point A, this was B, then the um, uh, probability density function for any uh, in, uh, for this uniform random variable was 1 upon b minus a, which is 1 upon length of the interval in which the random variable is defined. Here, the uh, random variable the uh, pair x comma y is defined inside the circle, and when it is uniformly distributed this pair, then that means that the uh, p d f must be 1 by pi r square, the area of the region. In this case, it is the area of the circle. Okay. Now, you want to compute the marginal uh, uh, of uh, x and margin, mar marginal p d f of x and marginal p d f of y. So, uh, for x you will integrate from minus infinity to infinity f x y d y. And this is what I want to point out that. So, your fixed value of x, if you have fixed a value of x, then how does your y vary? Y varies along this chord right? and the length of the chord is because this length is x this is r, the radius of the circle. So, this length is under root r square minus x square. So, therefore, this point uh, has the coordinates x comma under root r square minus x square and this point has coordinates x comma minus under root r square minus x square. So, your y varies from minus under root r square minus x square to under root r square minus x square. So, this is it. Right? this reduce because there is no other mass outside this. So, this is c into d y and c is 1 by pi r square. So, this becomes twice under root r square minus x square and this is defined for all x between minus r and r right, because your x varies from this point to this point along this and as your x varies along this, your y varies along this. So, the whole circle gets covered right. Similarly, because there is symmetry, so uh, your marginal of y will be twice under root r square minus y square upon pi r square, where again uh, y varies, uh, uh, sorry, this got mixed up. This is 
minus r less than or equal to y less than or equal to r okay, 0 otherwise. Now, suppose you want to find out the uh, uh, distribution of uh, random variable d, which is the distance of the point from the origin. So, this is under root x square plus y square. So, you take any point here and then uh, this is the distance the length would be under root of x square plus y square. So, we find out the distribution function of d, which will be f d r. So, that means, probability d less than or equal to r. Now, since everything is non-negative, distance is a non-negative uh, number, r is non-negative. So, uh, this event is the same as squaring up both the sides. That means, x square plus y square less than or equal to r square. Right? The two events are the same. Hmm. And again, by the same uh, argument that uh, for x square plus y square less than or equal to r square. So, all points inside the circle having radius r, all these points will satisfy this r, uh, define this event, right. Every point inside the circle of radius small r, and therefore, uh, the area here is pi r square, small r square, and divided by the uh, p d f, which is pi r square. So, you can you know uh, want you can do it from uh, by integrating and everything, but this is a straightforward because everything is uniformly distributed. So, therefore, the uh, probability of a point lying inside this circle small r is pi r square, just as we said that the uh, uh, you know this is uh, the uh, that means, uh, this is the area, which is favorable to our event and then uh, the density of the function is of the two pair is 1 upon pi square r square. So, therefore, um, the probability uh, the distribution function of d is r square upon capital R square. So, now if you want to find out the p d f of d, the p d f of d would be the differentiating this with respect to small r. So, 2 r upon r square and small r varying from 0 to capital R, right? because now d is a non negative random variable and the value of d will vary from 0 to r, because the point is here then this way and this way. So, it can go up to capital R right? and similarly, you can find out the expectation of d, which will be 2 by 3 r. So, uh, you know uh, just by uh, you know uh, geometry helps you draw pictures, then you can you know uh, get a good idea as to how to go about solving a problem. So, uh, uh, and the moment you have more than one uh, you know if you consider a pair of random variables and you can see that the complexity will increase the moment you consider higher dimension uh, you know that means, three random variables together joint density function of three, but uh, and as I go along I will try to solve some more problems relating to two random variables, joint distributions of two random variables. Okay. So, another example on uh, joint uh, distribution of random variables. So, suppose f x y is a function given like this 6 by 7 x square plus x y by 2, x is between 0 and 1 and y is between 0 and 2. So, then uh, you want to verify that this is this represents a p d f of the uh, of the variables x y. Okay. So, I will just integrate from uh, the 0 to 1 and 0 to 2 and uh, the working out shows that okay, this is x square y plus x y square by 2, if you are differentiating with respect to y, because I have written the limits with respect to y first 0 to 2. So, let us integrate with respect to y first and therefore, this is what you get and then um, you this you look at this then integration with respect to x 0 to 1. So, that will give you uh, this function and finally, you get the integral to be equal to 1. So, therefore, uh, the function does represent because it is a non negative function since x and y are both non negative. So, this is a non negative function uh, the integral in the defined in the specified area uh, um, uh, integrates to 1. So, it represents a p d f. Okay. Now, uh, to compute the uh, marginal p or the p d f of x or the marginal of x, you see I have already done it here, because you have to integrate this integral from 0 to 2 d y. So, this integral gives me the marginal of x. So, therefore, this is 2 x square plus x 0 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 1. And you see that if I now integrate this from 0 to 1, it will give me the answer 1. And hence, this is also a p d f, it is non negative in the specified region. And of course, I should also say 0 
otherwise. It is very important that your definition of the uh, PDFs must be complete in the sense that you must specify the uh, region on which it is defined. So, here it is in between x 0 and 1, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the, the PDF is defined by this function and it is 0 otherwise. Okay. Then, uh, you are asked to compute x greater than y. So, if you have to compute x greater than y, then see I have written down this, this, this is the line which represents x equal to y. So, this is the re region over which you want to uh, compute this probability, right? because you have to specify the event. So, then it will be, uh, see here, um, if you are um, integrating with respect to x, then uh, your, uh, you fix your y, you fix your y, that means Right, when I am integrating with respect to x, my x is varying, so y is fixed. So, when you fix a y in this region, how will your x vary from y to 1, because this represents 1 here, right, it is this line. So, that means, you are integrating from here to here for a fixed y, and as y changes from 0 to 1, you will cover the whole area, right, this, like this. So, therefore, a uh, range for the variable x is from y to 1 and y varies from 0 to 1. So, this is very important and again I will keep uh, repeating this that uh, draw the diagram, we can two dimensions you can always do it and then you get a feeling for uh, how the what are the ranges of uh, integration and so on. Okay. So, uh, integration with respect to x gives me x square x cube by 3 plus x square y by 4 from y to 1 and that is important because I must integrate with respect to x first, since the limits for x are in terms of y. So, then I will first integrate with respect to x and then uh, get the function as a function of y and then I integrate with respect to y. So, this has to be the order and you must keep this in mind. Okay. And so, finally, this comes out to be 15 upon 56. So, the arithmetic should be correct. Now, here what I was saying is that suppose you had to uh, compute the event probability y greater than x. So, in that case you see what will happen is, it is this region over which you have to do it. So, then um, you see you will have to break it up into or what you can do is, um, okay, maybe no it is not necessary, because then if y is greater than x, um, you will want to write the limits for that means for a given x, for a given x how will your y vary. Okay, that is no problem. The so, y will vary from here to here. That means, it will vary from x to 2. So, I will integrate with respect to, uh, uh, that means, if uh, y is varying from x to 2. So, we will have to integrate with respect to y here. right? So, the uh, uh, limits would be uh, x to 2 and then uh, x varies from 0 to 1. So, this will be the uh, this will give you this probability. right? If you uh, integrate first with respect to y, x to 2, uh, the same function and then you integrate with respect to x. right? Because for a given x, so this is how when you have the diagram, you can immediately see that given a value of x, the uh, corresponding value of y can range from x to 2 and that is it. Yeah, You can compute this way. Right? Now, um, just look at another example and maybe we do not need to compute it fully, but I uh, will give you an idea here. Um, this is um, f x y uh, is defined as c into y square minus x square into e raise to minus y. Now, the limits for x are from minus y to y and y varies from 0 to infinity. So, therefore, uh, to draw the diagram, see what I said is that when y is fixed, then my x is varying from minus y to y. So, it has to be between the lines, this is x equal to y and this is x equal to minus y right? or minus x equal to y, whatever whichever way. So, this is uh, this and this is this, this line. So, your um, x is in, uh, in between these two lines and your y varies from 0 to infinity. So, it is this region extending to infinity. right? this is the region. And so, once you know this, then there is no problem, because anyway you must first want to find out the value of c. So, find value of c. 
such that this defines a PDF. So, then um, you can integrate and you see the what will happen is that you come up to here. Now, this is y cube a s to minus y. So, you will have to you know do integration by parts and it will have to be done three times because you know you this will be your first function, this is second. So, you will have to um, uh, in the first iteration you will get y square, then you will have to do it again to get y and then uh, get rid of the y. So, therefore, it will be three times you will have to repeatedly apply integration by parts to uh, get the to get the value of c. So, that this integral finally, has to be equal to 1 and this yeah. So, once you have the diagram in front of you, you cannot go wrong. You can always find out the correct limits and then uh, decide how to uh, you know like what I was doing is I was dividing the region in a certain way to do the integration, which you have already done in your while you were doing your calculus course. Okay.